for the summertime has come and the leaves are sweetly blooming And the wild mountain time Grows around the blooming heather Will he go? Lassie go Need IT support during this time, then please send a private message to Jax, the IT support. Um, if you click on the chat icon, you'll find him very helpful. Um, if also you could please turn off your mobile phones and possibly turn them face down onto your table so they don't distract you while we're in the ceremony. You might also want to put the Zoom app onto the full screen. I'd like to invite you to give your full attention to this ceremony. Um, and if you could ask, uh, if we could ask you to refrain from eating or drinking casually throughout the ceremony. Um, and if you do need to move about, if you could please turn off your video, that would be appreciated. Thank you. So Jax, would you please mute everybody? Thank you for the ceremony. So let us take a breath together as Bill's family, friends and community to start the ceremony. Just making sure that you're comfortable. My name is Wendy Haynes and I am the family celebrant for today's ceremony. We'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land in this place where we're holding the ceremony in the Gumbangir country where Bill and Keith have been living for many years. Also, as there are many of you from far and wide, family and friends from Europe, where it's two o'clock in the morning, from New Zealand and also in the United States and Canada. We'd like to honor the indigenous people of all countries and pay our respect to elders past, present and those emerging. On behalf of Bill's husband, Keith, and Bill's daughter, Chloe, I welcome you and thank you for joining us for this farewell ceremony for William John Humphreys, or as most of you know him off stage or down in the surf, Bill. These are unprecedented times where we cannot come together to hug, to be close to one another physically. Yet we can be here in this way together and create a beautiful space to celebrate Bill's life and to honour and pay respect for all that he has given to this life by being a beautiful husband, a dad, a grandpa, a neighbour, a stage friend, a colleague and a dear friend to many people. For many of you, this is a new way to be together without that physical closeness of support, without shaking hands or hugging. You may be on your own at this time and not be able to be with anyone soon. So just a few ideas on how you might take care of yourself while we're here together, where many things can surface. If you feel a bit overwhelmed, you might want to just connect with your physical body. Just feel your feet on the ground. 
or you might want to connect with your breathing and just get a sense of the life force moving in and out of you, in fact, within all of us, and just connect with that shared breath. And if it feels right for you, you also might want to place your hand over your chest, just over your heart, and just feel your heartbeat. And this very gesture may help to soothe and calm your body and calm your heart. Today we come to give space to what's important, to what you would most like to share in this time of your loss and grief. Honouring your strength and vulnerability, your joy at having known Bill and creating a ceremony that is what Bill would have appreciated. Although I think you all know he would have appreciated a much bigger dance party. At this time, Bill's body and casket is at the crematorium as we gather. And the beautiful staff were on the phone with Keith and Chloe this morning and showed them very sensitively how they'd laid out Bill's body as the family had wished. As you can imagine, it was incredibly hard for them both and we all had a cry, even the staff. Yet there was some comfort for Keith and Chloe, that Bill's body was being taken care of by such kind people. There have been many tears and also much laughter from the stories that have been told over the last few days we've shared together. And today, we hope in our time together to share music and stories, insights that we've gleaned, and most of all, to share our love and our presence. Let us take a moment just to sit quietly and reflect upon our relationship with Bill. The things Bill said or did that have touched you, that you are reminded of as we come together. Allowing whatever is here to be felt just as it is. And if that feels a bit hard, you might want to bring your hand and just rest it over your heart or connect with your breath. These are hard and difficult times. So let us be courageous and present here together, no matter what comes. I'd like to invite those who were closest to Bill to share some stories and pay tribute. I'd like to invite Keith, Bill's husband, who'd like to speak first. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. And uh, thank you, everybody. I know there's people here I haven't even met <laughs> because Bill just touched so many people in his incredible life. And I know that he would be thrilled that uh, in this very unusual time that you've all gone to such great efforts to be here to celebrate him today. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I, I, I don't want to speak too long because, uh, well, as you all know, Bill was the real star in our relationship. He was the one most comfortable in the spotlight. Uh, even when we met <laughs> with the Bay players on stage, he was the leading man and I was the chorus boy and I set the tone for our relationship and I was perfectly comfortable with that because <laughs> very few people who could outshine him. In fact, he'd probably be a bit miffed I'm getting all this camera time now since he was the real movie star. But <laughs> uh, as you all know, um, Bill loved to surf. The ocean played a huge part in our lives. And when we first got together, I was, well, I was from the theater. So getting up early in the morning so that he could catch that perfect wave was not something that interested me at all. But <laughs> although I went reluctantly, it soon became a really important part of our daily lives. 
to go down there and I just loved watching him out there as I walked in the sand and of course that's where he proposed to me and and where we eventually got married a very intimate ceremony with his daughter Chloe who I wish I could see right now but I'm so sorry Chloe but thank you so much for making that the happiest day of my life when you welcomed me into your family <laughs> sorry we um we all know that Bill could. Bill could be a real grump, a real pain in the ass. <laughs> he could turn. But I tell you, I would, I would suffer through any number of those turns again to hear his beautiful singing voice when he would sing to me <laughs> one of his favourite Beach Boys songs. God only knows where I'd be without you. Um, he was a huge music fan, as you guys all knew, and had such eclectic tastes. But <laughs> I'd come home one day and there would be an opera, or the next day it'd be ACDC. Um, <laughs> whatever, whatever his mood, wherever his mood would take him. Um, and Bill wasn't a big drinker, but I hope that you'll all join me for a little toast at the end of the ceremony. But um, now I'd like to hand it back to you, Wendy. Thank you again, all of you so much. Thank you, Kate. I'd like to invite Bill's daughter, Chloe, to say a few words. Thank you very much. Um, I wrote mine down because this is extremely hard, obviously, but I just thank you all for being here right now. Um, Keith, I'm so grateful for all you gave to my dad and also to Chloe, who I would love to cuddle right now. I really appreciate that we all still have each other. You and Dad were great together. <sighs> what I love about Dad the most was his go-get-it attitude. He taught me, no matter what, to follow your dreams and enjoy the journey. And one of his favourite poems was a beautiful poem about a Greek island, Ithaca. It was written by the Greek poet C.P. Kabaki. I used to know it by heart because we would say it together often. Um, I would now, and now I'd like to read you a few verses. Keep Ithaca always in your mind. Arriving there is what you're destined for, but don't hurry the journey at all. Better if it lasts for years, so you're old by the time you reach the island, wealthy with all you've gained on the way, not expecting Ithaca to make you rich. Ithaca gave you the marvellous journey. Without her, you wouldn't have set out. She has nothing left to give you now. And if you find her poor, Ithaca won't have fooled you. Wise as you have become so full of experience, you'll have understood by then what these Ithacas mean. <laughs> Last week, a few days before he slipped into unconsciousness, he reminded me of this poem saying he felt rich beyond belief. Dad taught me to love the journey. And even at this time, though my heart aches, I know there will be gems here somewhere. This is the gift he gave to me. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. <laughs> if we could all just take a breath together. Chloe, I know it's been incredibly hard to be separate from your daughter who's over here at the moment and uh, but I'm going to ask Lucy to say a few words about her grandfather. 
quickly. I just wanted to say, Mum, I love you and I miss you and I wish I could give you a hug right now, but this is the best that we've got. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my grandpa, or Pa as I called him, and how he has had such um, an amazing influence on my life. When I was little, I remember him as being absolutely hilarious. He used to tell me these magical stories and he'd act out all the characters and the voices and he just loved to make me laugh. I didn't realise, of course, at the time that he was so keen on the theatre and he was actually part of the Bay Players. Um, but yeah, like he was an icon there and I had no idea. Um, I remember he changed when I was a bit older and for a year or two visits to see old cranky pants as I <laughs> rudely called him, they weren't the best. I realise now that he was suffering from depression and was just often overwhelmed with his work and his life. But I think it was his love of the theatre and his involvement in the youth programs that pulled him up again. He always told me he, he got more out of it than he gave. And of course, Keith. Keith, Keith changed him for the better. I think we can all agree on that. Um, pa really fostered my love for the theatre. By the time I was in high school, he would often take me to the theatre in Sydney as like a birthday gift or special present, just kind of any excuse he could think of. He really helped me become confident in auditions. We used to spend hours together talking about the theatre. He taught me and other students about stagecraft and voice projection and even helped me understand the trickier texts like Shakespeare, like, oh, but I mean, he loved it. He seemed to really come alive at rehearsals and performances and he loved celebrating at the after parties. I noticed he was quite a charmer. He was an awful shock when he became so ill and we found out that he would not get better and there was um, nothing we could do about it. And I really struggled to accept that. But it was so surreal because it was so unexpected and it happened so quickly. Uh, the last time I saw him, he gave me this beautifully bound book with all the Shakespearean plays in it. And he'd written a little note in it and it said, Shine on my little star. I'll be watching over you from the night sky. Every time I look at that book and those, those words, I'll remember Pa's talents and his loving, caring, generous personality. I love you so much, Pa. <laughs> and I'm really going to miss you. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. I don't know if you just saw that, but just Keith opened his hands out to you and just offered you a big hug. And your mum's there smiling for you too. Mm, thank you for that beautiful sharing. I'd like to invite Sarah, um, Bill's sister, to speak for, for us now. Um, thanks, Lucy. That was really so precious. It was it was beautiful. It's so hard not being with everybody right now, um, but I could feel the love, you know. And that was Bill's gift. He just generated so much love around him. So, you know, we just can share in this way with each other. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, my, my earliest memory of my big brother Bill was um, toddling as fast as my little legs could waddle behind Bill who just got a brand new shiny red trike for his birthday and he was already on it and pedalling really fast and I was trying to catch up like, wait for me, please, wait for me. And Bill waited. He stopped. He helped me get onto the little tray on the back. He made sure my hands were on his shoulders and then 
off we went together and I can always remember the exhilaration and holding on really tight and just knowing that I'd be safe. I, I always felt safe when Bill was around. He just had that capacity to really care. Um, apart from a few tough times that Bill went through, he was always there, ready for a chat and a laugh or a surf or, you know, a sharing of a wild time or a sad time. Um, I owe him my two greatest loves. One is that he introduced me to surfing. Um, you know, I think surfing gives men permission to dance and Bill was an amazing dancer. And uh, he wouldn't let me be one of those chicks sitting on the beach, you know, watching and waiting for my guy to come out. He, like, had me out in that water, out the back, and he watched and he waited until I got my confidence up. And um, one of my most precious memories... Come on, excuse me. ..is, like, catching a tube and coming out the other side and there was Bill thumbs up, hooping and hollering for me and, yeah, just there to share in my joy and happiness. Um, the other great love, of course, that he introduced me to was his best mate, Wayne. And uh, 36 years later, Wayne and I are still married and still surfing. Wayne was the only, only boy that he let through his guard and... Um, as we all know, Bill had excellent taste in men, so thanks for that. Thanks for that, Bill. Um, and he saved the best man to last, and that was Keith. And um, I was so proud when he introduced Keith to mum and dad, and they saw Bill happier than he'd ever been, and they just welcomed Keith with such open arms into our family. So. That was a very special, special time. Uh, I'd like to just uh, share like a vision with everyone because anyone who surfed in the 70s um, knows the movie Morning of the Earth. And there's a, a song in it called uh, Simple Ben. And it goes, uh, walking down the country road on the countryside of ease. And I just get the vision of, Bill with his surfboard, heading out for the best break that he's ever going to catch in his life. Um, he wasn't scared of death. And right up until just before he lost consciousness, every morning he'd wake up and say, thank God I'm alive. So um, I just want to say thank you to the biggest, best brother that anyone could have ever had and hey Bill wait for me on the other side and we'll paddle out together. Thank you Sarah. Thank you. We could all just take another breath together and and just lend our presence to this moment. We have another dear friend, Sonia, who would like to offer a tribute to Bill. Um, hmm. I've known Bill a relatively short time as I came to the area only a few years ago and um, we bonded over all sorts of things. The ocean, I grew up at the beach and, um, yeah, the acting, the music, the dancing, even depression. And, um, in, in, during the time that he was, dying and accepting that that's how his life was going. I was trying to say something and I was in my head trying to find the right words and, you know, get it right. 
and he just his voice was quite um delicate at the time and he just looked at me and he said don't hold back and uh, so i'm taking that with me and um even now in this moment just uh, finding the courage to speak in this medium isn't something that i thought i would do so um yeah, even, even in his dying days, he gave such a gift that I really treasure. And um, yeah, miss him. And, and, and he was such a huggy guy that I wish I could have been there at the crematorium to just lay my hand on his hand and have that physical experience but even as I hold I've noticed my hands are just clasped together so tight right now it's like I can imagine doing that with him thank you Bill thank you Wendy. thank you yeah thank I think we can all resonate with that sense of wishing we had one more hug, you know, one more opportunity to hold and be with. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'd like to invite Gary, who is another one of Bill's surfing friends, uh, to offer a few words. Thank you, Wendy. We've heard about Bill and the surf, and I'm one of the lucky ones who regularly surfed over many years with Bill. He, he was a really generous guy in the water. Um, Sarah's spoken about how he taught her to surf and encouraged her and cared for her. It didn't just stop with family. Unlike many older surfers who don't like the grommets, Bill encouraged them. He'd, he'd give them a, a high five or a, a cheer or a clap or a well done kid. He, he encouraged those young uns and as they got older and closer to Bill in age, they, they would be encouraged to help the young ones. And it was always a courteous Bill in the water, letting someone else take the next wave when it was really his to take. But every now and then, if you dropped in on Bill, he'd give you a real shout, but it'd be forgotten about. It is just a reminder don't take my way, don't drop in. But it was just lovely to see Bill progress and change over the years. You know, he had that period of pretty serious depression when going for a surf was his release, if you could get him out of bed. But then he met Keith and suddenly everything was all sweet. Getting up at six o'clock in the morning for a surf was a joy, but even better was Bill watching Keith on the beach. He'd, he'd have an eye for him to just know. There he was. He's my bloke. He's there. The quirky things that you guys might not know, though, sometimes we'd be out in the water and there'd be no waves. So Bill would ask one of the blokes around us, all women, and say, name me a singer. And whoever they named he would sing a song. He had the most encyclopedic memory of music, lyrics. But the trick was he'd then call that person for the rest of the day by that song. So if you named Johnny Cash, then you were Johnny Cash from then on for that day. And I've never had so much fun in the waters I did when Bill was around. It was just a joy to be in his presence. Yes, the surfing was fun, but surfing with Bill was more fun and he was blessed with what he told us many times about having Keith come into his life it just made such a difference to his disposition to his fun with us all but I certainly will find it tricky to go to the beach and not have Bill ever there again for those of you who want in the morning sun up about six o'clock there'll be a paddle out and we decided it's a Beach Boys song that will happen. Bill, I'll miss you. I look forward to, in the future, 
joining you somewhere up there and having a yarn. Thank you, Bill. I enjoyed my life with you. Cheers. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. I'd like to invite Jill to share a few words with us. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Wendy. Well, as we all know, Bill loved to sing anywhere and anytime. He and I became friends when we were auditioning for a local theatre production of Mamma Mia. He was just fabulous. We became great friends through music. The production was a big hit in our little town anyway. He was a really funny guy and made people laugh. But at times his depression made him very difficult to be around. He'd often prefer his own company in those times. He was a lovely guy. He worked tirelessly in the youth program in our town and he was really well regarded. The kids just loved him. He just related so well to them. He was a good, funny and honest man and I'm going to miss him so much. Go well, dear friend. I love you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. And it reminds me of a story that uh, I think, Keith, you were telling me that uh, you were walking down the street one day and one of the young people came up to you and just said how much Bill had changed his life and what a blessing it was that uh, he'd met Bill. We're going to listen to a beautiful piece of music by a dear friend of Bill's, Joe Newton, who wrote this song especially for Bill. Um, he couldn't join us on the call because unfortunately the internet wasn't working for him. But he recorded this in a shed that they'd spent a lot of time playing music in. And the family put together a beautiful photo reflection. I'm a wanderer looking for adventure Take it all in as I roll down this river Take a deep breath as I stop to remember why On earth I'm here We have a few moments where if there is anybody who would like to offer a few words, maybe a story has arisen from seeing the photographs or just hearing the family speak. Um, if you would like to speak, I'd like to invite you to raise your hand um, in the Zoom meeting, which you can do by uh, clicking on the participants and just raising your hand and then I can unmute you to speak. Uh, if you're on a telephone, you just need to press star nine. Hi, Bill. When I was a teacher, and he came to the school offering support to many troubled students. I always looked forward to having him there because the students looked up to him and followed every word he said and everything that he asked him to do. He was so giving. He was nothing was too much. Nothing was too much for him. Students doted on every word that he said. I'd like to 
say thank you, Bill, for everything you did for those young trouble students. And to come into my life for just a short time, but you were there. Thank you for that. And I'd also like to thank all his family. And also say, please accept my heartfelt condolences. Bill was a wonderful man. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. And I can see Julie, um, you'd like to speak, so thank you. Hello, I'm Julie. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. I'm in Perth, in the hills of Perth, and I've known Bill for a very long time. I know that Bill loved acting and his beloved local theatre, The Bay Players. He also loved poetry and song, as we've heard. And he could be relied upon to weave his favourite verses into our everyday conversations, and we absolutely loved him for that. He brought us joy, he made us think, he made us happy, and he made us the better for it with his kernels of insight to dwell upon. During his sad times, or our sad times, Bill believed that poetry and a visit to the theatre could indeed rouse both spirits and calm the soul. So this one is for you, Bill. It's one of your favourites. It's called The Last Call by Michael Ashby. The curtain has come down on the performance of a lifetime. But as the show must go on, we stage unrehearsed lines. So please bear with us, dear audience, and act your part as well. We salute you, Bill, the thespian titan who had such a good life to tell. And as Lucy mentioned in her session earlier, her speech earlier, may Bill's light shine shine on all the little stars whose lives he touched and he'll be watching over us all. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Bill and Keith's friend, Thomas, who was a dancer with the Perth Dance Company, who died last year said, life doesn't end. It just changes form. Life is a choreography of grace. It's all being done and we just have to go with it. Bill took this to heart when he was diagnosed with cancer late last year. And Keith told me that when Bill knew he was not going to recover, he kept reminding him to just go with it, which was both, as you can imagine, reassuring but also heartbreaking. Grief can come when we least expect it, and it comes in many ways. At times it feels like a numbness, a deep sadness, and in the next moment we can be laughing at recalling something very precious. These last few months in so many ways have felt surreal and disorientating for those close to Bill. In this gathering as a community, we come together as friends and family to foster that sense of belonging, that sense of caring, of bringing our presence to the loss and also to the celebration of Bill's life. So let us give thanks for Bill's life and the gift of his presence. So again, I'd like to invite you to just become comfortable. We've been sitting for a little while, so just breathing deeply together as we offer a committal. Later this afternoon, Bill's body will be cremated. And so we make this offering of love and gratitude now. Bill's loving, caring, loyal and compassionate nature will be how we remember him. 
We remember his wit and humour, his laugh, his style and charm, his love of dancing and surfing and music, and as we've heard, his love of singing. We'll remember his all-important need for self-isolation. Ironic as it is, he would have loved this time of just staying home. When you were reminded of him wanting his own way, adamantly and stubbornly, may you smile and remember. As you said, Keith, he was always doing his best. He was dedicated to his path and held a fierce determination to find resolve to overcome his personal challenges. He loved you all. He loved life and trusted that life would look after him and would look after you. Keith, you said Bill's form leaves this world and his spirit goes on. May your thoughts and hearts be nourished by Bill's capacity to love and his deep felt generosity of spirit. We have many people who've joined us today for the ceremony. Keith and Chloe, there's likely to be many guests here today that you won't know. And if we'd been gathered in person, they would have introduced themselves, said hi, and told you, told you how they'd known Bill. So I'd like to invite everyone to please leave a message in the chat room, even a simple hi, I'm here. Um, you'll find the little chat icon down at the bottom in the meeting trolls. Um, if you're on a mobile device, device, you just need to tap your screen for the meeting controls to appear. If you could include your names in the content of the message so they know who's been here. Um, or of course, you can go to Bill's Facebook page. But Keith and Chloe, I'm just wondering if you'd like to take a moment to look at the gallery view, because if you've only got the one screen up, then you can't see everybody's here. So just take a moment um, to see the family and friends and community are here. And if you bought flowers today, you might just want to hold them um, in your screen just so we can sort of see that display of solidarity and beauty that we each bring. Um, or you can just wave hello to see all your family and friends of Bill. Thank you, everybody. As we close this ceremony, is there a feeling or thought that you will hold close to your heart that might support you in the coming days, weeks or months? If there are one or two words that we can take, with, take away with us from this ceremony, what might they be? And I'd like to invite the family just to say a few words. Oh, oh, thank you, Wendy. Uh, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I, I didn't expect uh, to actually feel, I really do feel that energy and that love from all of you and those, some of those stories I hadn't heard before. It was, I'm just, I just wish I could give you all a huge hug, but I'm so heartened by the fact that we've been able to get together and gather like this to celebrate Bill. And um, I'm not sure if any of you have a glass, but uh, as you know, Bill wasn't a huge drinker, <laughs> but he did love a little sneaky nightcap. So in his honour, I poured his favourite of Bailey's on ice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to raise a glass to my beautiful Bill, our friend, And so to Bill. 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 To supported and I love hearing all those stories. I, I know I'm crying but I'm actually really happy <laughs> to have heard all those stories and just I, I, there's so much love that I have for everybody right now and for dad and I can feel him here with me. I know that I can and 
dedicate to Lucy. I love you guys so much. And we made up the best of him. So I know in us, he lives on. I love you. Love you. <laughs> Thank you for everyone being here together in the spirit of deep listening, of warm hearted presence. Keith, Chloe, Lucy, and Sarah, our love is with you. Take care, everyone. Be very gentle and kind with yourselves and call each other often in this time of stay at home. We might be distanced physically, however, we can stay very closely connected by offering each other our deep attention, our deep listening, our care when we do connect over the phone. I know the family are planning on having a small house party gathering online after this ceremony to reconnect and offer support to each other. And I think you'll all be glad to hear they're also planning a memorial service when this will become possible again. Before I close the ceremony, just a few things. If you didn't get a chance before, you're welcome to leave a message of love and support for Bill's family in the chat room. It might be a few words as to how Bill touched your life. It might be something he said or did and how it made you feel or a few words that describe him. Maybe even a few words of Bill's wisdom that you recall. If you could please include your name in those messages so they know who they came from. In a moment, Bill's photograph and another favourite track of his will be played. The family have also left a message of thanks and some information about support services that are available at this time. Keith and Chloe, thank you for your presence. They thank you all for your presence here today. Go gently, find the support you need at this time. Ring your friends and family, go for a walk, lie down and take a rest. Listen to some music and have a beautiful lunch like you might have done with Bill. And of course, learn some lines of poetry as Bill would have you do. Many blessings and may peace be with you all. Thank you again for being here.